Today we are checking out the Mei Klong Railway Market and I think this is so unique and so cool because I'm just standing on train tracks right now but then there's a market all around me. And a train is about to come through here in the next couple minutes. So everyone's taking down the awnings, getting, getting everything out of the way. And so we're about to have a train. Be like right here where I'm at. And there's not much standing space around here. So we'll see how this goes. Oh my god. It's just like right here. Just like that, the train is gone. All the awnings are being set back up and all the food and everything is being put back out. It's pretty crazy how quickly it comes through, how close it gets to you, and then how quickly everything just like goes back to normal. So the train comes at multiple times throughout the day, I believe like 8, 30, 11, 2, and 4, I think, but I could definitely be wrong. But so we chose to come here for the 8.30 passing by. So that means we left Bangkok at 7 a.m. And this place is packed with a lot of locals, but also a lot of tourists. So I think just one thing to know is like, it's gonna be a very crowded area and there's not much walking space. Your walking space is just the train tracks. Here you can buy a bunch of different trinkets, souvenirs, um, fish, produce, basically any market you think you could buy. Basically anything you can buy at every other market, you can find here at this market. Uh, so something just to be aware of that I've never seen in any of my travels um, is there's a lot of fish that's for sale here. And I'm all for eating food, like meat. I, it's not that, it's just they take the catfish, they're alive. You see them just like withering around in this very shallow bucket of water and then he just starts chopping its head off. Um, I was gonna film it, but I couldn't and I immediately had to walk away. Um, I'm all for different cultures, all for different things. That's under, that's just like how they live, that's how they do their life. But um, yeah, I had to walk away. Um, I've never seen something like that before. It was just wild. So it's about 9.15 and I'm already melting. It is so hot here in Bangkok. One thing to note though, when you're here at the railway market is there is a beautiful river that runs, that runs right alongside it. And there's a really nice like boardwalk that you can walk on. So I just went, hung out, spent some time over there and it was nice to sit in the shade and cool off because inside this market, it is warm. So it is 9.20 and it has like cleared out so much. So the busiest times are definitely gonna be probably 20 minutes before the train comes and then just a couple minutes after the train leaves. So you've got about 50 minutes there where this place is gonna be packed. a driver to take us to the railway market and then also the floating market and then we're gonna go to uh, a temple next. With it 
we just hired a driver and they kind of included everything in the cost. But with that means that they took us to like definitely a very scammy type place to like get your boat tour. I tried to argue with the driver, tell him no, bring us to the actual entrance of the floating market. And he just kept saying no, no, no. Thankfully we didn't have to pay for it. But one thing you do read online when you come to the floating markets is that instead of coming to the main entrance, a taxi driver will try and take you to a different place where they're going to charge you so much money to come here. And that's exactly what happened. So we wasted 20 minutes just driving through back canals before we even got to the main market. So if you do hire a taxi, make sure they drop you off at the main entrance. And if you hire like a, and so if you do hire a tour all included, make sure they bring you to the main entrance. And if they try and take you somewhere else, pull it up on Google Maps and tell them, just argue with your driver and tell them no to bring you to the right spot. Because it's so much cooler here at the main entrance when you just have all these boats <laughs> bumping into you and everywhere. It's worth it. Floating market's gonna have a ton of different trinkets and just different souvenirs you can buy. There's also a bunch of restaurants. Another really cool thing is there's other boats that will float by you and like sell you fruit or sell you chicken or sell you like spring rolls. Um, and so it's a really great place to come and it's nice because you're not having to walk around then. You can just sit on the boat. There are two options so you can choose a motorized one or a paddle. I would highly recommend that you choose the paddle one just because the motorized one, it makes it loud, it doesn't feel as intimate, and I just don't think it's as enjoyable. The best part of this tour, the mango. I wish I was joking, but I'm not. Okay, so I can 100% say, if your driver is trying to bring you to not the main entrance, just don't, like, do not get out of the car. Because you'll spend 30 to 40 minutes just driving, it like riding in the boat, just to get to the main market. And then you have maybe 10, 15 minutes there. Um, and then you're like rushed through, and you're also in a motorboat, and that's just not as enjoyable. Um, and I have read that online that they like scam you into spending just insane prices, like two to 5,000 baht per person when you come here, versus when you go to the other place, it's way cheaper. We're gonna head there now, and I'm gonna figure out what that price would be, because this is blowing my mind. Next up is Wat Sapran, uh, which is also known as the Dragon Temple. Wow. unreal cylinder pink building with just this massive dragon like wrapping around it and we are gonna go climb up to the top let's go one thing to keep in mind is that it's not just the big main dragon temple there's a bunch of surrounding temples there's a big buddha there's some other like tiger temples and there's also really cool water fountains with dragons with you can like try and throw the coin into a dragon and it'll bring you good fortune so definitely make sure you wander around the grounds name, and check off. Name, name, name. 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 <laughs> oh, right, your name? Uh, okay. You know. So when you first get here, they are gonna have you write your name and family name, one of these red deals, and then you're gonna place it somewhere up here and it's gonna bring your family good wealth and good fortune. Now we're walking like into the dragon. So when you climb up, you climb up around in like side of the dragon. It's all like a circular walkway. All right, there's definitely enough of an incline that you feel it. Thankfully they do have some fans going though, so it's not too teen stories. Wow. Once you get up here, you're gonna take your red ribbon, you're gonna tie it around the pole for the day that you're on. You're gonna put the flowers at the base of the Buddha statue. You're gonna walk around this base up here three times. The first time is for to bring good luck and love and fortune and to pray to your mother and father. The second time is gonna be for 
to pray for your mother's love for your father. And the third time is going to be that your parent, the parent's children have, the children love their parents. Uh, so we're going to go do that now. fun facts about the dragon temple. It is 80 meters high and 80 was how old the Buddha was when he died and there are 16 stories or floors and that is because there are 16 different levels to like reach enlightenment to go from like the bottom up to their heaven uh, and then also the dragon like represents going around like reaching from like hell and from the very bottom up into paradise then. Do be careful, the ramp can be very slippery, um, so I definitely recommend walking on the edge of the ramp. The middle tends to be where it's the most slick. here in Bangkok and for good reason. Here you're gonna be able to find countless clubs, a ton of different restaurants, a lot of street food vendors. Some are selling alligator, others are just selling different fruit. But my personal favorite uh, is gonna be the scorpion. So that was interesting. You can also find a bunch of different clothing vendors and souvenir and like trinket gifts that you need to get for people. When you're coming to Bangkok though and looking for a great night out, Khao San Road is going to be the place for you to come to. It, you could just spend all night partying here and bar hopping your way down. So I definitely recommend when you're in Bangkok, come check it out. On the guys, and that is a wrap on 48 hours here in Bangkok, Thailand. When you're coming to Thailand, you're most likely going to fly into Bangkok anyway, so like give yourself two days here. Make sure you go explore all of it. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next week.